So yeah. I think, you know, you have had a three decade long career. You are somebody who's adopted influences from everywhere. I'd love to take you back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say was the moment or the band that really made you pick up a guitar? Since I have memory, I, I was always seeing my brothers and my father singing folk music from South America, especially from Argentina, you know, like, I don't know why, but Carlos Gardel was like a big and idol in, in my house. Mm -hmm. So my father used to sing his songs, my br old brother. So we used to have all the vinyls and all the song books of Gardel. So I was just like learning these songs like it was part of my life, you know. When and, did rock and roll come in? And then rock and roll came in after when I was like 13 years old. There was, there was, a, there was a Rolling Stone album and also a the, the Beatles album at home, but uh, I just find them, you know, later in my life. And then uh, when I was 13 years old, rock music, like actually metal music <laughs> came to my life and everything changed for me. Mm. Yeah, it was like a big discovery for me. So I went from folk music from Colombia, vallenato, salsa, merengue, eh, you know, cumbias, in, and then also from South America, and they went from that to metal music. Metal. So I discover Slayer, Metallica. Talk to me about Metallica. <laughs> You've always talked yeah. about Metallica yeah. and what they Yeah, definitely for. Metallica is my, the band of my life, the band of my life. I just love Metallica so much. I'm a big, biggest fan. Uh, I remember when I listened to Kill Em All album years ago, I just changed my life. I just want to sound like them, I just want to play like them, I just want to be like them. <laughs> I was obsessed, you know, <laughs> at that time. I used to have, uh, like, my, my, my room, my, in my room, uh, just full of photocopies of Metallica. Posters you know, of Metallica. Posters, yeah, but, but wow. photocopies, like, oh, photocopies. Yeah. Like, like, Not actual black posters. Black and white. <laughs> yeah. no, I didn't have posters or no, nothing like that. I used to paint my own teachers, you know, with the logo and everything. I used to learn rip off the, merch that you made the, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to learn all the songs by ear, like not just the guitar, but the drums. You yeah. know, obsessed. You know, I didn't understand a word. It was just for me, just the sound. Phonetic. Phonetic. Yeah. Singing. And then you know, my city, Medellin, Colom in Colombia, was passing through a very difficult situation. So, metal music and death metal and all, all these sounds yeah. uh, became very important. When at you least think for uh, my generation. When you think about that. Medellin was going through its most violent time. Mm -hmm. It was probably the time of El Cartel de Medellin. Mm -hmm. Now there's this whole romanticizing of that in media, mm -hmm. but the reality is you were living in a city that was surrounded by yeah. bombings drenched in blood, really. Yeah. What did metal and rock and roll do inside your ears, inside your home, when there was all of this going on well, outside? Was, it means all for me and for us. You know, I think uh, we found through metal music to uh, music in general, just a way to escape from that reality. And mm. um, when I was a kid, I was living in downtown Medellin. So basically, I didn't have like friends in the neighborhood, nothing like that. It was not easy for me just to go out of my house and just play football or something like that. I was just yeah. always at home with my brothers. I went to school, back to, to my home, and then stay at home. It, it was, wasn't safe to be it, No, no. If you open the door and just give like two steps and then maybe a bus or a taxi or you know, it was like full of cars and yeah. motorcycles. It was very busy, you know. So, but at, uh, even if we were having a very difficult time in the city, inside of my house, and it was peace and love, you know. I mean, we love music and actually, I, I don't remember how I learned to play the guitar. I was just playing the guitar, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I used to see my, my old brother uh, singing Gardel and all these, you know, songs for, from South America. And then I started my own uh, journey, you know, through music. And your band, Nicky Moses. Um, I was part of a metal band for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, I, I moved to Los Angeles back in 96. So I started this another incredible journey. From scratch. From scratch. There was a moment when you were named Person of the Year of the Latin Recording Academy, mm -hmm. Laura Zolrich came out and declared himself <laughs> a fan of Juanes. Yeah. What was going through your mind? Oh what did God. that feel no, like? No. I, I mean, nobody like, gets to live that with their idols. No, no, that's crazy, you know, for me. You know, I couldn't believe he was standing there in the stage, on the stage of the Grammys, and he was giving, me, giving this award for me. It was like a circle, you know, like the yeah. whole thing together, everything just 
became perfect for me. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And the most beautiful thing about that is that, you know, um, sometimes I, I send a message, you know, to him and he responds immediately. I mean, he's always there and, and I follow Metallica since to these days. I mean, I, I am part of the fan list. The, You're the, in the their fan club. Fan club. So every, every week, every, every well, Monday. So is he in yours. So. Yeah, see, see. So, I mean, I am like a real fan, yeah. you know. So for me, it's so beautiful. This is something that music gave me. It's just opportunity to meet all these people that I really respect and love. When you Google Juan is next to pretty much any big name in rock and roll, whether it's Bruce Springsteen or the Rolling Stones or Prince, there's always some kind of collaboration or tribute that you participated in, mm -hmm. even Elton mm -hmm. John. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think no other mm -hmm. Latin artist has gotten that close <laughs> to rock and roll. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess it's because I really love it. You know, yeah. I love Bruce Springsteen. You know, the first time I listen to Bruce Springsteen, I just get crazy. You know. I couldn't believe his voice and the sound. And first time I listened to Black Sabbath or mm. Vine Helen, it was because he brought these vinyls to my house. So that was the way I started to discover, you know. And then when I was in school, my, my, my friends in school, hey, do you know Iron Maiden? Do you know Metallica? Do you know Slayer? Do you know what? And I, and I was like, I, I just know Carlos yeah. Garde <laughs> and the Omez Diaz. I, I, I don't know. So I started to discover all this music. And then when I started my solo career, it was always part, it, it, it's part of me, you know. Uh, all the influences that come from, uh, from different places and bands and musicians. Early yeah. on in your career, you had something to say. Fijate Bien was a song about victims of landmines. That's not something you were hearing in pop music at the time. Mm. It was a time that everybody was crossing over and speaking mm. English and singing in English. What was it like to have that much to say and that much success so early on? Mm -hmm. Because each one of the albums was more you know, successful than yeah. the one before. It's having like a learning process, to be honest, you know. At the beginning, uh, I mean, actually, that's the way I, I think and I see music. You know, for me, it's not just about relationships and, and, and love, you know. Love is a very big concept, and pain is part, and death is, is part, and war is everything is part mm -hmm. of this mission we have to learn here. So for me, always music was opportunity to express myself, my my, my thoughts about different different issues, and definitely Colombia is one of those, you mm -hmm. know, because um, yeah, because we're we're a beautiful country, but a lot of uh, full of contrast, you know. Yeah. We, we we don't we don't have. I don't know what it is, what it is to live in, in a peace country yet. Um, and probably I, I'm, I'm not gonna know before I die, but, yeah. but I would love for new generations just to, to, to have the possibility to live in a peace country. And we are far from that yeah. for now because there are many problems in, not just Colombia, it's just in general, you know. It's it feels like heavy. the world is very violent now. Do you feel like there is an opportunity for rock and roll again, maybe like there was in the <laughs> 90s in Colombia? You know, for me, the, the only world that exists is in my my head, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, I really believe so. Mm. I really love music. I love rock music. I'm not gonna quit <laughs> playing guitar never ever in my life. Actually. But what does it do to people? You know, like ah. when when things are so dissonant and difficult outside. I wonder if this is an opportunity to for something harder. I think we need to, to go back to our yeah. essence, definitely. Mm. I think we are missing missing a lot of spirituality. Uh, in, in politics and governors and every, you know, all the people that around the world, I think we are missing spirituality. Mm -hmm. It's very important, I think. Uh, and, and I think art is so important and I still seeing how in general, you know, politics and governments doesn't pay so much attention to, to art, yeah. to, 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 to get into that, in, into young people, you know, to, that's the only way to change, uh, they can change the power. Yeah, but for now, I really believe music and is, is a way to change at least my world. Mm -hmm. So I just want to keep doing it. You're somebody who's always been so involved. You write your musics from, I assume, music first, then lyrics. Latin music has undergone so many different transformations. In your perspective, um, and let me ask you this first. Did you ever feel in your career like you were chasing commercial success at the cost of music, the music you wanted to play? Yes, I think, you know, when you are in this journey, it's, it's I mean, sometimes it's very fast, easy to get lost. Mm. And sometimes you really need to get lost just to find yourself again. And um, 
I was, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, eight years ago, I was a little bit like, I don't know what to do now. Maybe I, I tried this, I tried that, and I did it. And I don't, I don't regret, you know, about it. I just feel uncomfortable somehow, which at that time was, was good for me, you know, because I realized that I needed to, to go back to what I was, you know. But I, I, but I love, you know, I love music. I have three uh, uh, young, uh, two, two girls and one boy. And, not that young. Uh, not that young, I mean, yeah, <laughs> <I'm> tall. <laughs> but but uh, they, they have been teaching me a lot of, you know, new, new music and things like that. And I really like it, you know, I, I like it. It's just that I just want to be in my, in my side. I still love rock music and I want to keep uh, searching for my own sound. Yeah. If you had an opportunity to talk to new very popular Latin artists who are seeing the cusp of fame, who are seeing, who are chart topping. What would you tell them about the value of music, the kind of music that comes from instruments? Yeah, yeah, first, first of all, I would like to say to all new generations, and all parents, try to, to bring instruments to your kids, to, to learn music, you know, guitar, violin, piano, drums, whatever. Even if they are not going to be musicians, you know, just the fact that they learn to play an instrument is very important for their brain and for the way, the way they, they think and, and perceive the world, you know, that first. And then to all my colleagues in general, I think I mean, there are very la talented people in the Latin world. I, I, I am so impressed, you know, every day I see Joaquina, for example, from Venezuela. This girl is like 19 years old and she sings like, Beautiful, and she writes incredible. She plays instruments. Gali from Puerto Rico, yeah. your, your, your hometown. She sings beautiful. She writes music. I mean, so I see young people doing great things, but it's very important just to learn an instrument. Yeah. Why was it that you never sang in English? Uh, well, because <laughs> for me it was hard to sing in English because I still think in, in Spanish. As you, as you see, my English is not perfect. I'm having learning a lot in the last It's a lot years. better it's a lot than better. 20 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> but I, when, I, when I was trying to sing in English, I was having a very difficult time trying to pronunciate right mm. yeah. the words. And then I see, no, no, I'm losing the, the feeling here because I'm just paying so much attention to the way I need to pronunciate the words and I'm losing the, you know, the feeling, so I don't know. I think... Were you pressured, though, to... Um, were you ever asked, like, oh, I, you should have I, an English album? I had my own pressure. You, you put I mean, it on yourself. Nobody told me, you have to do it. No, no. I was like thinking, ah, maybe I can do this. And, but then, no, I just realized that I, that I, that I want to keep, you know, singing in Spanish and, you know, just working for, for my culture, my, my community. And, and because I love Spanish. Mm. I love it. I love it. I just feel comfortable doing it. I remember one time you wore a shirt that said, Se habla español. The story behind that shirt was that, uh, we were at the Grammys. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was the second time, you know, Latin the Grammys. Latin and, Grammys and, yeah. and, and, Cause and the first Latin Grammys is yeah. when you won all Yeah, the normally awards. they, they uh, play the Grammys at Univision, Univision. Mm -hmm. but now that time was in CBS. So the audience mostly were uh, in, in English. In English. Yeah. So, so they ask everyone like, please, if you can speak English, it would be great. <laughs> so that was kind of uh, <laughs> a way to say, okay. Rebel moment. Rebel moment. Fighting yeah. for the language. Fighting, yeah, yeah. We so also was... did that to Bad Bunny with like <laughs> foreign language. Ah, see, 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 see. <laughs> but you see now, because of reggaeton music and because of Bad Bunny and all those guys that are having doing an amazing, you know, job, I'm happy for them. You know, Spanish language is more close to yeah. everyone. People are more comfortable. Yes, it. <laughs> and it's like right right now in these days, you don't need to do it. You don't you don't need to sing in English just to have success. Although you know? there's there's a lot of discomfort with you know, migration and immigrants in the States right now. Uh, a lot of fear because of the increase and things like that. Mm. What do you think Spanish language music can do to welcome people, to bring people together? Well, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, <clears throat> there is always like <clears throat> the political side of everything, you know. Okay. And of course, when you see what is happening in, in the border and what is happening in the countries of origin of these people that are coming, it's, 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 I mean, it's so difficult, you know. But then there is another side of this, which is the culture. You know, the Spanish language is beautiful. And the that music, we bring the, here. The music, yeah. yes. Most of the people that are in this country um, are good people, working hard for their families. Uh, this country was made of 
uh, integration. I mean, people came from everywhere and just believe, built this beautiful, amazing country. And how would you describe what the music of our countries is as it integrates itself into American culture? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, for me, when I was a kid, uh, when I was a, a teenager, I just l loved rock music, as I told you before. So I learned to play guitar in English, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to play the electric guitar in English, you know. Yeah. I didn't speak a word, but I was like listening to Jimi Hendrix, to Eric Clapton, to all these great guitarists. Um, and I think that's the way, you know? Yeah. Right now with social media and technology, it's, it's so easy just to find, to get information from everywhere. I just, someday I'm just, okay, I want to listen to folk music from India. Actually, I was there. on Instagram like six, six months ago and I, and I saw a guy singing in Indian, so amazing, amazingly, and I say, I, I write a message to him. You did? Yeah, and, see, and he answered the, the, the message, like, oh, hey, hello, man, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm from India. It's crazy, you know, look, you have access to anything. Another day, during, during the COVID time, I was looking to social media, and I, I saw a guy from, from Japan. He's called mm -hmm. Tomo Fujita. He's a teacher in Berkeley School of Music. Oh, Berkeley, yeah, Berkeley. And I sent a message, hey, yeah. man, can you uh, give me a lesson by Skype? I said, yes, man, of And he did. I can do it. <laughs> okay. Was he surprised? Did he know you? Um, I was surprised that he answered me. You were surprised, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he probably searched you and he was like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> and then, and, I mean, actually, we, we became friends yeah. and he's coming to my, to my show today. Oh, we're going to so perform great. together. Oh. Yes, because he's actually, See. yeah, my teacher in the last year. So that's yeah, the way music integrates each brings other. Brings people together, because, yeah. because now it's easier just to connect. Yeah. I remember seeing, hearing you talk about interviews, uh, in interviews, about your admiration for people like Prince, and mm. you got to play oh in one God. of his tributes when he yeah. died. I also remember I was covering a concert of yours <laughs> in Los Angeles, yes. and everybody ended up at Prince's house. Yes, you ended up yes. playing with yes, him. Yes, 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 yes. Was that one of the highlights? Oh, my of, God. Tell me about yes, that yes. experience. That was, it was the highlight that was of my life. the most <laughs> weird thing ever for me, because I was like, so I couldn't believe it, you know. I, I am in the prince's house. And he's just playing with his band. Yeah. And 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 then he looked to me and said, "Come on, come on, and, and yeah. play with me." So I played for a little while. I mean, I was just so nervous, you know. I yeah. was like, I couldn't believe it. I remember. But it was that. beautiful. He was yeah. he was very cool. And and those moments in my life. Another time, I was in Washington, and I performed with uh, Steve Vai. Wow. Okay. Steve Vai. You know. <laughs> I was doing a version of Hotel California. Yeah. He was playing the electric guitar. Wow. And, and when, I, when I look back and remember those moments, I say thank you, music. thanks to the music, you know, for, for this. Yeah. This is just amazing. I never thought that that was going to happen to me. Never, ever in my life. I came to in New York in, in 1996. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. The first time. Yeah. I used to wear a jacket. I had a little money here. And I was just walking on the streets. I didn't have anything, you know. I was just like afraid of, mm. of this country, of this language, of this culture. But I wanted to make it. So I remember those days. And then yesterday, you know, I was there, the Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. What does that mean to you? I mean, you've so, been everywhere. So you've beautiful. sang for the Pope. You've sang yeah. at the at the Nobel Peace Prize uh, yeah. ceremony. You've so been I, everywhere. That definitely. But now, this still means something. To oh you. my God! It means more than before. Definitely, Why? you know, because now I am enjoying more mm. the process. I am enjoying myself singing and performing because before maybe I was not ready or before I was not, you know, what did being that do? conscious about what was happening to me. I was just like living in the moment. What's the cost of not being ready? Um, you know, I, I think it's just part of, of, of the process of, uh, you know, grow, growing. You know, Maturing. Somehow. Yeah, mature. Growing some gray hair. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you make mistakes, but I don't regret either. You know, I say, okay, maybe I need to do that just to be here. I think so you've always fine. had a great image. Yes. You've never had an image of somebody who's had, no. you know, big mistakes. But, you know, sometimes You're a good role you, model. Well, sometimes when you, when I did the wrong thing artistically, it, it hurts me a lot. Mm. You know, because I compromise something that is very uh, important for me. Why do you think that happened? Um, well, because because it's, it's, it's I mean it's, it's difficult, you know, this life, this career. Sometimes I mean you cannot be always the same in the same place, like with the same 
uh, clarity about Just everything. Just doing what you want to do. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes. So.